First up at 5.30, court documents painting an abusive picture inside Twistars, the training facility John Gettert owned and coached gymnastics for years. Just hours after learning that he would face some two dozen charges in court, Gettert died by suicide yesterday afternoon. News 8's Lindsay McCombell joining us now from the live desk after sifting through some of the probable cause documents today. Lindsay. Brian and Sue, we obtained the sworn testimony that was laid out before a judge on Wednesday, prompting the charges that we learned of yesterday. I do want to warn you, these allegations showcase an emotionally, physically, and sexually abusive environment Gettert allegedly built inside that Diamonddale training facility. He allegedly would yell and berate athletes on their bodies to the point where they would develop an eating disorder and in some of the most extreme cases, attempt suicide. He also allegedly called coaches of athletes who went on to get a college scholarship and intervene and tried to get them taken away. In terms of physical abuse, he's accused of stomping on the top of gymnast's feet if he became angry. He also allegedly would shove gymnasts into or off of equipment if they made a mistake. One excerpt from that testimony stated, while spotting her, he grabbed her at the waist and threw her into the bars, striking her face and neck on the low bar this caused her to rupture her lymph nodes in the right side of her neck, causing a black eye and tore her abdominal muscles. Another allegation said that he pushed someone off a balance beam more than a dozen times. The two sexual abuse charges were from the same alleged incident. The document states Gettert followed a 14-year-old gymnast into the locker room and assaulted her before saying, quote, this would not be happening if you just completed my assignment at practice like you were supposed to do the day before. Now, in one incident that allegedly took place in 2013, Gettert allegedly followed a gymnast into the locker room, stomped on her feet, and threw her into a wall. Charges were presented to the prosecutor in that incident. They were denied, and instead, Gettert was ordered to go through counseling. Brian and Sue. Wow. Some troubling accusations there, Lindsay. Thank you for that. One man says that he witnessed the moments leading up to Gettert suicide. Diamond Daniels from our affiliate in Lansing walks us through exactly what the man saw and how he's reacting. A local janitor recalls his brief encounter with John Gettert just moments before he took his life. He was actually pretty polite. Scott Sugg was cleaning out the Grand Ledge rest area off I-96 when he crossed paths with Gettert. Not unusual. Uh, he said hi, said hi. Um, he walked out. We've been having trouble at the uh, dumpsters where he was parked with people illegally dumping trash in there, so I kept my eyes on him. That's when Suck says things quickly got suspicious. He was just walking around kind of nervously around the truck and, and going behind the dumpster and then would come back out and just kind of like he was up to no good. No good was right. Sugg says Gettard went into his truck and then back behind the dumpster. And I heard a pop and walked over there and called 911, found him on the ground, deceased. Police reportedly arriving on the scene just before 3.30 p.m., blocking the rest area to traffic for several hours while evidence was collected. As for Scott Sugg, this is a day at work that will never be erased from his memory. That was Diamond Daniels reporting.